We're back. I'm very pleased to say joined again by a man we have the privilege of speaking with from time to time. He is Congressman John Shimkus. He represents with great distinction the people of the 15th Congressional District from Illinois. He is an Army veteran, a graduate of West Point, the U.S. Military Academy. He served for some 28 years in both active duty and reserve forces, rising to the rank and retiring as a lieutenant colonel. Colonel, if I may, welcome back to Secure Freedom Radio. Glad to have you with us. Well, it's great to be with you. Thanks for having me. Always a pleasure. Listen, you have been in the thick of so many fights, and we won't have time to do justice to practically any of them. But let me start with the topic that we've been dwelling on a lot lately for obvious reasons, the Iran, what I call Obama bomb deal. You took an early position that was very critical, I think properly so. Has anything that has transpired in the intervening couple of weeks uh, since this deal was unveiled persuaded you that, no, actually, it, it is a good thing for us to do, including General Dempsey's claim that pragmatically he can support it? Uh, no, absolutely, absolutely not. It, it's, all, it's just based upon the premise that Iran is good actors, and by allowing them into the international community um, and and being part of the nonproliferation folks as they say that they will uh they will be changed and i i mean that's a premise that i it's not based upon past record or current facts uh by, by you know the deal just you know first of all give them money to continue to support uh radicals and uh destabilize the region it it allows them to develop intercontinental ballistic missiles it then allows them to develop a a nuclear weapon. So I, I'm really uh, frustrated, and that's not even including whatever may be occurring on these side deals, which uh, we still have to smoke out. You've really touched on several of the key points here. Again, as a guy with hard experience in the United States military, just it would seem to me the notion that we're going to provide billions of dollars and the opportunity potentially quite quickly, not five years from now, but perhaps even quicker, for these guys to buy advanced conventional weapons, let alone proceed with their nuclear program, it would seem an invitation to killing an awful lot more Americans, and they've they've done a fair amount of it already. Well, that, yeah, advanced conventional weapons that they can provide to their agents throughout the region. I mean, uh, continue to stabilize Lebanon. You're you're, you're back, um, causing additional problems in in Iraq and Syria, um, of course. I, 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 when I talk to my constituents, it, 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 they understand that if, if in an agreement with another country, you can't get them to release illegally held prisoners, um, and you can't get them to just not say death to America, um, how do you how do you cut a deal? How do you cut a deal with the? <laughs> yeah, not the prospects aren't good for better behavior in the future. Let me ask you about something specifically because uh, Congressman John Shimkus is, among other things, a member of the a senior member now of the House Energy and Commerce Committee. Both by virtue of your service on uh, the Energy Power Subcommittee and your engineering degree from West Point. You and I have talked in the past about the vulnerability of our electric grid as a potentially well, a kill shot, conceivably, for a country like Iran that seems determined doctrinally and in terms of the capabilities they've put into place to use an electromagnetic pulse attack against us or perhaps a cyber warfare or some combination of the two. How serious a problem do you consider this vulnerability to be, Congressman Shimkus, and what should we be doing to remedy it? Well, I, I do think it's a, a threat, and I, I don't think anyone has done what you done is just connect some dots between a nuclear armed Iran. Um, I mentioned their ability to get into continental ballistic missile technology, but a nuclear airburst would fry our electronic system and, you know, throw, you know, the North America into a panic, which, uh, which would be what Islamic radicals would, would love to see. A world without uh, and, America, I'm afraid, in short yeah. order, as they say. So, so you got Chairman Upton and, and uh, Chairman Murkowski on the Senate side moving energy bills that uh, are, are, you know, the premise is not pick up big things that cause strife between the parties, but the transmission grid is something that there is some agreement on. I'm just not sure we're going far enough to uh, put into place the protections we need. Um, and then on the side thing, I'm worried about the, 
you know, you hear a lot about smart metering and smart technology, and that's all based upon a premise of, of uh, energy efficiency. But when you get smart technology, that means you have smart electronics, which means an electromagnetic pulse could fry that stuff versus conventional wire, <laughs> conventional wires and switches. You know, I, as I'm fond of saying, uh, Congressman Chimpkis, you could wind up with a stupider grid, <laughs> making it all that smart if you're not careful. And I, I'm very heartened by what you say. I, I think you're right. We're not going far enough. There is a Critical Infrastructure Protection Act, which would at least require the Department of Homeland Security to develop a strategy for doing something along these lines. But of course, your committee is the one that can actually make that happen. And, and I look forward to your leadership in that regard. May I turn to one other place where you were exercising considerable leadership to good effect? And that is, again, as a former military man, you appreciate the absurdity of the situation in which our men and women in uniform in this country are not allowed to be armed as they are often overseas especially when they're in harm's way. They're under assault now. We've seen again and again uh, from jihadists of various stripes. Talk about the bill that you're trying to pass that would perhaps remedy that situation. Well, they are. Uh, there's a couple of bills out there. I think I've joined on the bill uh, sponsored by Congressman Duncan Hunter from San Diego area, uh, you know, that allows our recruiters to be armed, that they're trained, they're professionals, and they are targeted. Um, you know, every state now has some form of uh, concealed carry, even the state of Illinois, which was the last state to do so. Um, I, I think it's uh, it's an easy, you know, an easy move to, to, to state and let these folks be armed. Uh, we shouldn't have to have our law enforcement professionals arriving late carrying weapons when we have trained military people who can defend themselves. And who are being targeted, as we know, by the Islamic State, among others. This would seemingly be something that is amenable to just being directed by the Secretary of Defense, and I know you've written a letter to that effect. I, I hope you'll do that and obviate the need for legislation, but if not, that you'll get that done. Listen, one last thing, uh, Congressman, before we have to let you go. You have been working on the Internet domain name system and protecting our continued benign control of that. Would you talk a little bit about what's at stake there and, and what you're trying to do about that? Yeah, it's, and it's a very difficult process to talk through, you know, briefly, but um, a lot of the internet today is is really controlled by a multi stakeholder uh, agreement and a company, a not for profit company called ICANN. The uh, top, uh, the domain name system which connects the IP addresses is the one, one part of the IANA functions from uh, ICANN, and that's where we still have oversight of uh, because we have a contractual. The United States has a contractual arrangement with ICANN. To administer the uh, making sure the IP addresses go straight. Now we know China and, and Russia would like to balkanize the market, control the uh, information flow, and deprive their citizens of of free free uh, access to information. Uh, and so we got to be very very careful as the in the world internet community wants to police and have control of this last vestige of you know, the development of the World Wide Web by the United States. And we're just saying trust but verify. Let's watch this closely. To do that, we have to extend the contract. My .com Act requires the um, federal government to extend the contract with ICANN so we can have oversight. So when they come to a final agreement, we get a chance to look at it. This is so important, and it's just not really understood by most Americans, as you say. It's one of those classic examples, it seems to me, Congressman, of uh, you won't know what you've got or had until it is gone, and uh, the potential for mayhem to be wrought by China, by Russia, by others who seek to control, unfortunately, not just their own you know, citizens' access to the Internet and information and so on. But I think mess up ours is uh, is really a, a terribly, terribly serious problem. We appreciate your leadership on this with the dot-com act, as you say, and in so many other areas. Congressman, thanks for taking some time with us as well. Uh, your service to our country, both in uniform and in the Congress, is really appreciated. Keep it up. Uh, have a good working uh, recess, uh, district work period, as they call it, and um, come back to us, stand rested and ready to fight this uh, Iran deal, if you would. Next up, we'll talk with Christian Wyden about that and more straight ahead.